guys, this is Bill from Spencer1984.com, and today I'll be taking a look at the Ravel Starsky & Hutch Ford Torino kit. This is something that's been in development for quite a while. Ravel released some test shots of it over a year ago, and got some feedback from customers. Uh, they've been back and forth with the factory, trying to get the details as right as they could. But, after all that time, we finally have it. So, let's take a look and see what we've got to work with. Starting with the box, got a picture of the 1-1 on the cover and both ends here. And we've got some detailed pictures of the model here on the side. The decal sheet has the stripes, the license plates, the gauges and gauge face, along with some other trim details. The instructions are fairly typical of Ravel booklet style. If you've built any of their kits before, these will look familiar to you. Generally pretty clear diagrams. And for the kit itself, everything is separately bagged, though I've opened some of the pieces. Here we've got the clear pieces, which do include the upper windows for the sides, four headlights, windshield, rear window, and there is the police beacon there, along with the tail lights. The chrome parts tree has the bumpers, the tail panel, four wheels, headlight bezels, the grill. Over here we've got the engine components, valve covers, carburetors, air cleaner. Now, the wheels look a little bit shallow to me compared to the original car. Not terrible, but uh, just a little tiny bit off maybe. The tires are Ravel's standard hot rod tires. They've used these in a bunch of kits. They used to have sidewall detail, but they've since been removed. Then they got big and littles. The interior is also standard Ravel, where you've got the platform with the rear seat and shelf area, and then the separate door panels. So we've got some pretty nice engraving there. And you can see the front bench seat. Here's the rest of the interior. Steering wheel, column, pedals, radio, and some body pieces, the side view mirrors and the hood, and over here the back of the bench seat and the dashboard. And there is a little bit of an outline on the top of the hood from the bracing, so that needs some sanding, but otherwise things generally look pretty good. And some people have complained about the hinges on this, and they are pretty hefty. Uh, this has been compared to a vintage monogram, like an 80s kit. Not necessarily is a bad thing, but the biggest thing that's been pointed out is the way that the hood and the engine bay are made. And to me, it's not that bad. Yeah, they're huge, but they're easy to cut off. They're just square trim pieces right there and most of that's going to be hidden by the fenders. So, I've got no complaint there. Now to the, some of the black molded sprue. We've got the front suspension and part of the rear. You can see those have some pretty good standoffs for the jacked up rear suspension. The bulk of the engine. This is a 351 Windsor. You get the engine halves, oil pan, heads, intake manifold, the belt. Overall, really pretty good casting on this. The details are nice and sharp. Everything is recognizable. And no real problems. Here's the other half of the rear axle, the water pump and the radiator. And the radiator does have some nice engraving on it. The other half of the radiator is cast as part of the bulkhead. You also have the inner wheels here, 
the full exhaust system with crossover, some other engine bay detailing. And here's the chassis pan. And you can see the two pins down here. And that's where the rear axle mounts. So for those who would want to lower it to a stock ride height, it'd be a really simple matter of just trimming that and letting the rear axle sit higher in the chassis. Also because the exhaust and the front suspension are not cast as part of this, it'd be really easy for anybody to make any other modifications they want to. Uh, if they wanted to turn it into a stock car or other custom piece, it should be pretty easy to do. And finally, the bit that's been causing so much concern over the last year. Now, to me, the body generally looks pretty good. There are a few minor nitpicks, like the rockers don't pull in as far as they should. Uh, this was a problem Ravel had on their Challenger kit, which was originally a die cast that they modified. I've heard some other people complain about the cast-in engine bay, which Again, I've got no problem with that. The detailing in it is actually pretty nice, and for those that don't want it in there, it'd be a fairly simple matter of coming in here, just making a couple of cuts, and then that's gone. You do have a headliner cast in. And some pretty nice detailing for the door handles and door locks. Seams are all nice and straight. Little Ford emblem front and rear. They're actually so fine I don't know if the camera will be able to pick those up. But the side window shape actually looks pretty good I think. Because this was one of the areas that was uh, a problem for Ravel. And I think comparing it to the full-size car, I think they did a pretty good job of getting that pretty close. Just for comparison, the only other 74 Ford that's been available before this has been the Model Car World Resin Body, and you can see the side window shape is completely different. This has the more accurate kick up. Uh, this straight across is actually more in line for what the four door Torino would look like. It also has a slightly softer transition right here. This has more of a sharp edge. Size-wise, they're arguably identical. You know, there's more differences with the way that the body is creased, but for the most part, these are essentially the same size car. Now the other thing that you notice between them is this does have the more correct square taillight corner, where this actually tapers a bit more than it should. But, the rockers pull in on the Model Car World body more than they do on the Ravel. So, there's a little bit of a trade-off, but overall, the Ravel kit is much better, much closer, requires far less work to get correct. In fact, the problems with it are really so minuscule that I'm not even going to worry about correcting them. I think 90% of the people who build this aren't going to be worried about the small details. Those that are, I don't really see anything here that's impossible to fix, and I don't see anything where Ravel neglected their duties to get this as accurate as they could for a mass market. So overall, I really do think that Ravel did a nice job on this. The detailing is sharp, the overall shape of the body I think is almost dead on. There are maybe a few small details that are off, but for the most part, there's nothing that really breaks this kit. And like I said, it's one that I've been looking forward to for quite a while, so I'm actually going to be starting in on this right away. So check back next week when I will have the first in a series of building this up. Thanks for watching.